Yo, what is up guys, it's the Goblin, and I'm here with another Call of Duty Black Ops 3 video for you guys, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking a bit about this amazing class setup in Black Ops 3, one that looks amazing, as well as some other topics in this video. So basically, this gameplay is not mine. This is from my buddy SwagXPL, some of you guys may know him, I'll leave his link down in the description, and this gameplay is with the new FAMAS, or the FFAR in Black Ops 3, which is a pretty good assault rifle added into the game. I think he gets a nuclear in this gameplay as well, and basically, I really wanted this FAMAS or the FFAR. I still really want the HG40. I've opened a crap load of supply drops, even weapon bribes, and I've still been unable to get it. And as we all know, that's a big issue in Call of Duty Black Ops 3. I can't even think about another like game where if I want to buy something from their microtransactions, I literally can't buy it. I have to gamble and roll these supply drops to try to get it. But maybe I'll be able to unlock it one day, but as of now, I don't have those two guns which I really want. I do have the MX Grand, I do have the Marshall 16, um, uh, the Sniper, the RSA Interdiction, so I do have some stuff but I just don't have the two that I really want. But anyway, in today's video, we're going to be talking a bit about a class setup here for the FFAR for those of you guys who do have it. And even those of you guys who don't have it, this class setup is pretty awesome. And it's one that my buddy Swag, who's a really good player uh, on the game, uses a lot. And I definitely use this class setup myself as well. So let's get into right into that. If you guys are new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Be sure to hit it. And also be sure to drop a rating on this video, either a like or a dislike when you guys are done watching. So basically what this is, is first I'll talk about the FFAR. The FFAR is is one of those guns that when they bring back old guns, they tend to not bring them back as overpowered as they were at first, which is understandable. And the FFAR is one that has quite a bit of recoil. It's probably about an average assault rifle in this game. I've seen it a few people, probably two or three people call this the best assault rifle in the game, but most people are saying this is sort of an average assault rifle. And I would agree with that from what I've seen of it. And I picked it up a few times and gone on some nice kill streaks with it in the game. Obviously I don't own it. So my really only experience with it is watching videos on it, talking to my buddies who play with this as well as I picked it up a few times from those lucky people who got it. But basically the class setup that he runs with this, and this is a pretty amazing class setup he said for the FFAR, is you want to run the extended mags, the grip, and the suppressor. Now this sort of reminds me of back in the day, the FAMAS. In Black Ops 1, the FAMAS was by far my best gun. I've said this before. Basically in Black Ops 1, I was a full-on tryhard, and I would use the FAMAS pretty much every single game. It's kind of like, like in this game, if you were a full-on tryhard, you'd probably use the VMP every single game, which I still I'm a bit of a tryhard. I still use the VMP quite a lot. But back in Black Ops 1, it was literally, I had at least double the kills with the FAMAS compared to any other weapon. And the FFAR right now, if you run it with this class setup, the extended mags and grips are basically uh, required for this gun. And the suppressor is optional, but I definitely think that the suppressor does help out. And uh, obviously the class setup that my buddy Swag is using in this gameplay, he's using the Afterburner first perk, which basically, this is my opinion on that. On small maps like Nuketown Combine, you really do need flat jacket. I think most people would agree with that. But on these bigger maps, you're free to run Ghost, Six Sense, um, uh, whatever you want, Afterburner. Those things can all work on these bigger maps, and that's what he runs. His second perks are obviously Scavenger and Fast Mags. I think those are pretty standard perks. And then the third perk he has on this one um, is uh, Awareness. Awareness is a perk that's interesting in this game. I find that Awareness, it's something that I really don't use that much, because when you use Awareness, you really have to be able to sound hoard the enemies and be able to listen for people's footsteps so if you guys don't have a headset or you aren't into that you can just run in your classic blast suppressor or attack mask whatever like that but this is the ffar now that's an amazing class setup for this gun obviously i'm pretty jealous i don't have it but i've talked to people that have actually played i've talked to swag and he says this class setup is the best obviously he's using it and i definitely do agree um basically the ffar if you guys don't have it this class setup can still be used with something like a kn44 a man of war anything where you have an assault rifle or an h VK even would be really good. If you have an assault rifle on a pretty big map like this, like this map, you really want to be mobile. You really want to be able to make jumps, stay stealthy. And the silencer grip extended mags, along with that afterburner perk, really makes yourself be able to go all around the map and really do help you out um, with being mobile with an assault rifle. That perk is really not, you, you know, you don't really need it that much on the small maps. I tell you, on small map, six cents, flak jacket are definitely perks better than this. But this is a 6v6 on a big map, and that perk definitely does come in handy. So for the rest, this commentary basically what I want to talk about is I want to talk a bit about 
when Call of Duty brings old things back into the new game. Because Call of Duty fans are some of the most feisty ones in the whole gaming community. They will complain about everything. They will complain about innovation. They will complain about lack of innovation. They will complain about re repetition. But it seems that whenever Call of Duty brings back stuff, and they really do this a lot. Let me name some examples. Already in Black Ops 3, they brought back the this gun, the FFAR, which is the FAMAS. They brought back the HG40, which is the MP40. They brought back um, some maps as well, Bonsai. They brought back that map into Verge. And they also brought back uh, Hijacked into Skyjacked. And that's just in this game so far already. Now, obviously, with next year, we have Call of Duty 4 being brought back, brought back as a whole game. And I think this is really easy for the developers. It seems that it wouldn't be that hard when you already have a full thing. Uh, you know, you don't really have to come up with the idea. Which, as a lot of people will know, on a creative thing or on creating something... Coming up with the, the idea can be the hardest part. So, for example, making YouTube videos, some people are very talented at making the videos, but they just don't have good ideas, and then the video doesn't come out well at, at all. So, coming up with the video idea is probably the most important part, and same with coming up the idea for the map. So, when they bring back these weapons, it seems to get everyone excited. And now, what I want to talk about is that they're bringing back this Call of Duty 4 Remastered, and honestly, to be honest, from, you know, the, let's think about it. The game came out in 2008, I think it came out with, 2000 and, uh, no, COD 4 came out with 2007, because World at War was 2008, and I know Modern Warfare 2 was 2009, so Call of Duty, uh, came out in Call of Duty 4 came out in 2007 and this one uh, remastered is going to come out in 2016 so that's nine years later so if we think about it Call of Duty is a game played by you know people using the teenage years to the university college level years um, how many people that bought Call of Duty 4 on release date are going to be still playing and buying the remaster and Infinite Warfare on release date it's probably not that many and that's why it seems kind of weird it might have been a better idea for them to remaster maybe like uh, MW2 even or but I don't know. It's all up to them as a business. But um, this is a game that's being remastered nine years later. And obviously, this the idea behind it was they're trying to get the old fans hyped up and try to get them to buy the game as well as the new fans. But the thing is, a lot of people who are getting excited for the Call of Duty 4 remaster probably didn't even play Call of Duty 4. I'd say probably about... 70, 80, maybe even 90% of the people that will be buying this game didn't buy COD 4 on release date. And me personally, I did not buy COD 4 on release date. I did not play COD 4 when it was in its prime. I played Call of Duty 4 for the first time in 2009. So I was two years late to the party for Call of Duty 4. But I have played a lot in these past seven years. But I know a lot of you guys have not played Call of Duty 4. And a lot of you guys have played Call of Duty 4. So I want to know in the comment section down below if you have played and if you have, haven't played. Now, I know on the internet... It can be a mean play sometimes if, if you say, I have not, I haven't played COD 4 and there's a nuclear in the gameplay. Some people might roast you, but it's not your fault, man. If you're, think about it, even if you're 18 years old right now, you would be nine years old when COD 4 came out. And I really don't think you should be playing Call of Duty when you were nine years old. So let me know in the comment section down below. And if you guys haven't played COD 4, there's definitely no worries. And it's going to be pretty interesting this year. One thing I've been thinking about a lot is how is this going to work? Because whenever I think about COD 4 and I think about, you know, making videos on it and making class setups on it. And I talk to my buddies about it. My buddies think, you know, everyone's going to already know that stuff. Everyone's going to already know the class setups and all that sort of stuff. But in reality, if you actually think about it, a lot of the people playing this game will have not played COD 4. And it's going to be very interesting to see how does a player base spread out when Infinite Warfare comes out. Obviously, Infinite Warfare has been getting a lot of a hate so far. But we really don't know as it comes out, you know, what's going to happen. Is it going to be 50-50, half the people on uh, Modern Warfare, half on Infinite Warfare? Or is it going to be more like 70-30? Who really knows how it's going to work out? It's going to be pretty interesting to see. Are people going to be grinding? You know, how are people going to split their time? And me personally, I really don't know. And I don't think anyone else knows at this time. I think it's all up to deciding how good is uh, Infinite Warfare actually going to be. If Infinite Warfare is a pretty trash game, I think everyone's going to spend a lot of time playing Call of Duty 4. And um, if Infinite Warfare is a good game, it's going to be one of the best years ever for Call of Duty. And that's one thing that I was talking about like before anything with Infinite Warfare. Warfare came out when I just heard about the remaster. I think if Infinite Warfare is at least a decent game, call it like for multiplayer, I think call this would be one of the best years for Call of Duty. However, if Infinite Warfare is complete trash and all we have is the remaster, it's going to be kind of a tough year for Call of Duty. It's going to be interesting to try to see, you know, what's going to happen with Call of Duty this next year. I'm pretty excited as well as I'm nervous. Obviously, there's been a lot of hate on the Infinite Warfare reveal trailer. 
I hope that the next trailer they come out with, the multiplayer trailer or whatever it is, is really good. They need to come out with a banger for the next trailer, and they need to not make it like no more campaign space stuff. They need to come up with some straight up multiplayer. I want to see someone running around with an SMG dropping a nuke or something like that. That classic Infinity War action. That's what I really want to see from the next trailer, and that's what I think we'd all be excited for seeing from that next trailer. We want to see traditional Call of Duty. That's what everyone wants to see, and they've kind of been scaring off the fan base by showing that uh, space stuff. And I think it's kind of, you know, not smart for them to show everything right in the trailer. They showed the boost jumps, they showed the space, they really just brought the cat out of the bag and showed everything in the trailer when they could have kept it for a later date, you know, showing us just a one minute trailer like Battlefield did right now, and they kept it all for later. But I'm just rambling about Infinite Warfare now. What do you guys think about them bringing back stuff in Call of Duty, and how many of you guys have played Call of Duty 4? Once again, this class setup does look amazing. This class setup is amazing with the FFAR or with your favorite assault rifle. It'll definitely work out and keep you mobile with the assault rifle because a lot of the issues with assault rifles is they aren't as mobile as SMGs, but this class setup sort of fixes that. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you guys made it to the end of the video, comment FAMAS or FFAR down in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching. If you guys could drop a like if you made it to the end, I'd really appreciate it if we could get 2,000 likes on this video. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe for Cookie, and I'm out. Peace.